he's told that somebody got shot in Cloverly. He makes a joke. At some point when I'm cross-examining him, he sort of chuckles. And I, I believe I said to him, do you think this is funny? Mike Robinson, who was a meth addict, who popped pills, who took Suboxone, who was involved with Courtney, whose wife had an affair with Mike Black, never questioned by police. One of the things that Ms. Corner asked Mike Robinson on crosses. Do you have flashlights? And his answer was, I have several flashlights. Why is that important? Because the children said the man had a flashlight. Mike Robinson, who can get rid of two birds with one stone. Think about that. Mike Robinson, who's now living with his little sister and having babies while they're both still legally married to other people. Let's get to Heather and Keith Whitcliffe, the party house. Heather Whitcliffe tells you about some threats that she believes she received from Dennis. But those are not threats that are related to what he's charged with. Those alleged threats happened in 2015. What Dennis is charged with is witness tampering in 2018. If you remember when I crossed her, she tells you that she stopped reading the letters. She didn't even read the letter from October 2018. So how is she threatened from a letter that she never read in 2018? A letter that I might say, there's no envelope addressed Heather, the only envelope that we see is the envelope addressed to Courtney. Courtney, who doesn't live at 21 Farragut. She tells you that in the letter, Dennis tells her, my attorney is going to make you out to be a drug dealer and a drug user. And I asked her, but isn't that true? Weren't you a drug dealer and a drug user? So what he's telling you is actually true. He's not making up anything. He's not telling you to say that you're a drug dealer and a drug user. He's actually speaking the truth about what she was and about the fact that she was doing drugs in 2015. We know that she was buying weed from Mike Black because her husband said that and she admits it. We know that she was selling drugs and she admits it. She is not a credible person, and I would have you think about that. Keith. Keith tells you he knows Dennis, he knows him as Dennis, he knows him as Wolf. He's been to his house, he's always been cordial, he's never had any issues with him. He's always been respectful to him. And then he comes in and testifies about letters that were addressed to his wife. Letters that presumably were in an envelope that were sent to Courtney Scarretta. Letters that I'm um, presuming that he opened, because we know Courtney didn't open them. She, didn't, she never testified to opening that letter. He talks about things that he overheard in a conversation between Dennis and Courtney that have to do with the death of Mike Black. Mike Black, his best friend. Mike Black that he knew for 10 years. Mike Black, he was best man at their wedding. But he doesn't think it's important enough for him to go to the police and let the police know about those things. His best friend, who was murdered, doesn't think it's, it's an issue or anything that he had to do anything about. I'm 
going to leave it to you what you, what you should think about. Key statement. A man who says he doesn't do drugs, he doesn't sell drugs. But we heard testimony from Courtney that she sold drugs, Heather sold drugs, Keith sold drugs. Let's talk about Dennis. Dennis who gives several statements. Dennis whose custodial statement is given to him, is taken, excuse me, is taken from him after he's given 60 milligrams of morphine. A statement where he admits he'd been doing drugs all night, the night before. He was up all night, had probably three hours of sleep. A statement taken by a lieutenant that had never met Dennis before, that had no idea what Dennis' demeanor, Dennis's demeanor was before, who had no idea what Dennis would be like when he's on drugs, had no idea what Dennis's tolerance for drugs was. Dennis is open with him, cooperates with him, and at some point, Dennis decides, when he realizes what Detective Finnan is doing, laying his cards on the table, <coughs> maybe I shouldn't say anymore. Not because I'm guilty, but because these people are coming at me hard. <coughs> Let's talk about expert witness Special Agent Hogger. Special Agent Hogger tells you about historical data for only one phone, Dennis's Nemo's phone. He's never given Mike Robinson's phone because nobody interviewed Mike Robinson. Nobody thought it was important enough to interview Mike Robinson. And what does he testify? He tells you that he can't tell you the exact location of where Dennis's phone is at 7.25 or 7.30. He tells you that he was never given the address of 21 Farragut as an address that the phone may have been at. And we know that the state knew about 21 Farragut because Sergeant Hogger doesn't do his report until 2019. He didn't do it in 2015. He didn't do it in 2016. He does it in 2019. He also testifies that at 7.25 and 7.30, the two phone calls that involved Allison, that Dennis's phone pinged off the tower closest to River Road. Not off the tower that's closest to Elmhurst, the tower that's closest to River Road. Now, that doesn't mean that he was at Farragut, but it also doesn't mean that he was at Elmhurst. And he couldn't tell you exactly where that phone was. He can't tell you that Dennis's cell phone was at Elmhurst address at the time that a shot was heard by Hector Rodriguez at 730. He cannot tell you exactly where that phone is. What do we have in this case? And this is not a simple case. This is a complicated case with love affairs, love triangles, who's doing who, who knows who, who's doing drugs with who, who's keeping secrets from who, because there are a lot of secrets here. We have pictures of a victim. We have items taken into evidence and nothing's done with them. We have minimal investigation. <coughs> What don't we have? There is no smoking gun here, ladies and gentlemen. There has never been a weapon recovered in this case. There are no forensics. Dennis is closed even after they view surveillance and they know exactly what he has on. And we know that the state knows how to get search warrants because we talked about that several times. At no point do they attempt to take any clothing? And you saw pictures of Dennis's apartment. You saw all the clothing that was there. Not one article of clothing is taken whatsoever. What else don't they do? They don't search the van outside. 
the home of Michael Black. They don't do a sound test on that band outside of Michael Black's home. They don't go back to the Walmart or the Wawa to check for additional footage to see whether or not Edwin took the route that he said when he went home. They don't show Kayla O'Brien pictures of Edwin's van. They don't play the video of the van to Kayla O'Brien to determine if she can tell if that was the noise that she heard. And in 2015, they don't interview Allison. Allison, the person that Dennis is on the phone with at 7.30, the time that Hector Gar Garcia hears the shot that struck Mike Black in the chest. Allison, who has several conversations with Dennis that night. They don't interview Diana Lopez, who was also on the phone with Dennis prior to the shooting. And I'm going to go back to this again and again. They don't interview <coughs> Mike Robinson in 2015, though they know of him. They don't search Mike Robinson's home or his cell phone. They don't do a travel time between Farragut and Elmhurst, two points of interest. They don't do a travel time between Calhoun and Elmhurst. And even more surprising, Lieutenant Finnan tells you that there were no other threats except the threat from Dennis in July of 2015 on Mike Black's phone. But we know that in October of 2014, someone called Mike Black, threatening to kill him. And how do we know that? We know that through his text conversations with Katrina. And who's Katrina? I put Katrina all the way up at the top. Katrina is a young lady for the, for the months of September, <coughs> all the way through November, is texting back and forth with Mike Black. Explicit text. Not only explicit text, but explicit photos. And he asked her in October 2014, did she have someone call his phone threatening to kill him? Never investigated. Nothing done whatsoever regarding that. The only person that they investigate is Dennis. No one else. Even though we know Mike Black was involved with more than one married That text in 2014, excuse me, 2015, another possible suspect to Mike Black's murder that's never investigated. <coughs> Let's talk about Mike Black. And I don't want to speak fast, badly of Mike Black. But he was a very busy young man. He was involved with a lot of women. And we know that through his text messages, and we know that through testimony. We know that he was involved at least with two married women, Kelly Robinson and Courtney Schiaretto. I've told you about the explicit text messages with Katrina and the threat from someone calling his phone. We know that he was involved in drugs. We know that he sold drugs. We know that he sold drugs to Heather. We know that he used drugs because on the date that he dies, he comes to Heather and Keith's home <coughs> to buy drugs. And Courtney sold him those drugs. And why is that important? That's important because <coughs> Ralph Gagliano, the toxicologist, who did the toxicology report at the request of the medical examiner, Dr. Shaw, comes in and testifies that the specimens that he was provided, that Mike had alcohol. And I'll, I believe you'll see in one of the pictures of the living room a bottle of beer on the floor, that he had THC, or more commonly, marijuana, and that he had meth in his system. And in fact, he testifies that the level of meth that Mike Black had in his system was above the therapeutic range of methamphetamine at the time of his death. Let's talk about Michael Black and the night of November 9th, 2015. 
On that night, prior to getting shot, he's texting with Courtney about 6.43 about getting somebody to fuck Dennis up for cheap. Once he's shot, and at the time that he's calling 911 on his personal phone, there's another text in his work phone directed to Chucky. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about 7.30, the time that Hector Garcia, Hector Rodriguez of Garcia, hears the 7.30 shot. Between 7.30 and when he calls 911, it's nine minutes. 